is the desert box. And here is Jerusalem. And here is the temple. Here are the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Here is Babylon. And here is Iran. Every time we get the desert box out in the Godly Play story, it begins with the same words, and many of you can probably say those words with me. If while I'm saying those words today, you remember them and you want to say them with me, you can, okay? The desert is a dangerous place. And people don't go into the desert unless they have to. The desert is always moving, and it's easy to lose your way. People who get lost in the desert don't always get found. In the desert, not much grows, so there's not much to eat. And we need food to live. There's very little water, and if you can't find water, you can die. During the day, the desert is hot. At night, the desert is cold, and when the wind blows in the desert, the sand blows, and it stings your skin. So people who travel through the desert wear many clothes to protect their skin from the hot sun and the cold nights and the blowing sand. The desert is a dangerous place, and people do not go into the desert unless they have to. That is the end of the part you know. Now I want to tell you a new part. Now we've said people don't go into the desert, right, unless they have to. People don't go into the desert unless they have to. But sometimes the desert is the only way to get from one place to another. So say you had to go from Jerusalem to over here in Babylon or Haran, the desert's pretty much how you got to get there. And so people would put on all of their thick clothes that would protect them from the sun, and they take some food, and they take some water, and they would set out into the desert to make that journey. We know a lot of stories about people who traveled through the desert, like Abraham and Sarah. We know a story about God's people traveling through the desert to make their way to the promised land. We know lots of stories that go through the desert. Now, We'll let our children get situated here. One second. There we go. One third. Thank you, everybody. Okay. So here are all of our people who have traveled through the desert. Are you ready? You ready? Well, today's story comes from Isaiah. So I'm going to put our Isaiah scroll over here by Jerusalem. Because Isaiah the prophet came near to God, and God came near to Isaiah, right? And so Isaiah knew what God wanted him to say. God's people were about to be taken into, anybody remember this? Exile, I heard it, thank you, Nicholas. God's people were about to be taken into exile. And God knew that God's people were going to need some words to hang on to. Because when the people went into exile, they were going to have to make this journey from Jerusalem over here to Babylon. And on this journey, they had to wake up when the soldiers said to wake up. They had to go to bed when the soldiers said to go to bed. They had to eat when the soldiers said to eat and what the soldiers said to eat. They even had to work when the soldiers said to work. So on this journey, the people were going to need some words to hang on to. So what's it like to be in the desert again? Anybody remember? Hot. And what else? Is there a lot of food and water? No, it's pretty. It's a pretty barren place. There's not a lot. Well, listen to these words that God gave to Isaiah to give to the people. I think that maybe these were the words that they had on their minds as they were making this journey through the desert. Maybe they heard over and over in their heads as they were on that awful, awful trip. These are the words. Now listen to these because they're pretty good. The desert and the dry land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like a flower. Emma, will you put the flower in the desert place? Good job. 
The desert will burst into bloom and rejoice with joy and singing. Let's put some more plants in the desert. We're going to put the plants in the desert for us. Annabelle, put plants in the desert. There we go. This is Isaiah's vision for the future. And then he says, so strengthen your weak hands and support your unsteady knees. And say to those who are panicking, be strong. Don't fear. God will come to save you. The eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be cleared. The lame will leap like deer and the tongue of the speechless will sing. What does it sound like when we sing? Can you sing one note for me? It's going to sound terrible, but it's okay. We're going to go with it. Ready? One, two, three. That was beautiful. All right. So the desert is going to sing. Water will spring up in the desert. Can drink some water in the desert for us? The burning sand will become like a pool. The thirsty ground will have fountains of water. The jackal's habitat will become a pasture. And we put a pasture in the desert for us. That's grass. There we go. The grass will become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there. So instead of this chain, Isabella, can you draw a road in the desert with your fingers? So that's our highway in the desert. It will be called the holy way, and even fools won't get lost on it. It'll be so easy. The Lord's ransom ones will return, and they'll go back to Zion, that's Jerusalem, with singing. Can you sing again? One, two, three. Beautiful. So the people will go back, and they'll be excited, and they'll be singing, and they'll have joy upon their hearts. Happiness and joy will fill them up. And the grief and the groaning of this terrible journey will be gone. So the journey through the desert was really hard. Can you make the face that people are probably making in the desert? Yeah, wow, those are really good. Those are really good sad faces. But what does God promise is coming? Show me with your face. Joy. What does joy look like? Oh, I see some joyful faces. It's very good. It's perfect. Well, today we're going to light the Advent candle with joy, and I can't even see it from here. Can you guys see the Advent candle? Okay, well, we're going to light the Advent candle with joy today. It's the pink one. So it's like we're turning on the porch light because we believe that joy is coming, just like these people believed that joy was coming, because we believe that God's promises are true and that they are coming true and that they will come true. 